a woman who just delivered a baby and she was breastfeeding him. She looked at the fire kindled in the dishes and she was only worried about her breastfeeding baby. Allah Almighty made the baby speak in the credit and said, Koma, you are the truth, do not be afraid. So she jumped in it. This is a story that is presented in a beautiful surah, it's called Surah al buruj was samai that al buruj In the verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُونَ النَّارِ ذَاتِ الْوَقُودِ إِذْهُمْ عَلَيْهَا قُرُودِ You can go back to the surah and read the tafsir and enjoy learning this beautiful meaning and stories. When Musa alayhi salam, the Pharaoh tried to kill him several times, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported him by miracles after miracles. Finally, the Pharaoh said, you are a sorcerer, you are a magician, because when he threw his snake, he turned into a huge snake. He said, look, I can defeat you. Then he gathered all the sorcerers from Egypt, 70,000 sorcerers, 70,000 magicians. He can do very well in Las Vegas. Then they challenged Musa alayhi salam. They said, would you like to throw your stick first or shall we throw? <coughs> Allah inspired him to tell them, go ahead and throw your sticks. So each and every one of them threw his stick and through illusion they deceived people. People could see snakes moving and crawling 70,000 sticks turned into snakes in the eyes. In fact, it was not, it was just illusion. Even Musa as a human being was so scared of the scene. Allah Almighty said, don't you worry, now throw your stick. So when one single stick turned into a real human snake and it started devouring all the fake snakes, everybody backed off because they were so worried and scared. When the sorcerers saw what happened with Musa's stick, they recognized that this man is not a sorcerer, nor is he a faker. He's got to be a true prophet because this is a miracle. So we all say that once we believe in the Lord of Musa السلام, they came all the way from Upper Egypt and from everywhere in order to be paid. They said to the king, if we defeat Musa, and they're going to pay us, they said, I'll make you very rich, don't worry about it. But once Musa السلام, threw his stick and they saw what happened, they all fell in frustration and they said, we believe in the Lord of Moses and Harun. The king said, I'm going to torture you and cut your hands and feet and cross, and I'm going to crucify you again in the dead palm trees. They said, do as you wish. We will never give up on our faith after we have recognized the truth. There is a difference, brothers and sisters, between somebody who chose to be a believer and somebody who is forced or somebody who is born following any faith and does not understand it or somebody chose this faith in order to marry or in order to get a job or for any only reason once the business is accomplished I'm not interested in this faith anymore so the true believers will be confronted with challenges I mentioned some of them in tonight's lecture and there is more and more and more. You know, in America, when somebody accepts Islam, the challenges they face because people do not leave them alone. And the FBI will start visiting with them. And they will start giving them a hard time, especially if it is a woman and decided to wear a hijab. Similarly in your but God asks himself, why those people are willing to give that much sacrifice? Look at Americans for instance, they enjoy freedom and they do not go through what Muslims go through. But when those people recognize the truth, similar to the sorcerers at the time of Musa, and the people at the time of the king and the boy, and the believers everywhere and every time, once they recognize the truth, and they 
Let your money is the ones of Allah. They're willing to give up on anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've known one person by the name, he, when he accepted Islam, he gave himself the name Hilal. And he went through financial crisis that he was so broke. He came to the Islamic center and people were trying to help him to find a job. Somebody in the Muslim community offered him a job. A rich person has many stores. So that new convert was very appreciative and grateful. And he went for the first day of job and he found the store is selling liquor and pork. And this is a new person to Islam. But he learned a few things, amongst them that it is not allowed to drink, nor to sell alcohol. And it's not allowed to eat pork, nor to sell it. So he went to his boss, who is a Muslim from the Middle East, and said, Brother, I thought it is not allowed to sell alcohol and pork. And I entered Islam in order to submit totally to Allah. I'm not taking the job because I left this belief and I left sins for the sake of Allah. So I'm not going to do it again after I accepted Islam. This is somebody who is a new Muslim. And even though he was in a financial crisis, but they did not let him violate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited. Why the person who's given him the job is a Muslim? So those who accept Islam willingly have the virtue of that they have chose, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him this magnificent word. That once any person becomes a Muslim, all his or her previous sins will be remitted and wiped away. Amr ibn al As was a great warrior at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. He fought against Muslims a lot. When Allah put guidance in his heart and he came to accept Islam, the Prophet ﷺ stretched out his hand to take the pledge of allegiance from him. So Amr put back his hand and said, not before you promised me that God will forgive me my sins. I was a big time sinner. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, smiled and said, don't you know that Islam removes all the sins that preceded it? And guess what? That when you accept Islam, you are a new world. True. When you perform a hajj and you repent, you are a new world. True. And when you repent and you pledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to quit sinning, you are a new world. True. But for those new Muslims, there are some more good news, which is, when we say that Allah remits or wipes away or erases the past, that does not include the good deeds. So the good things that they have done in the past is still maintained and recorded. The only thing which is deleted from the history file is the bad deeds. No matter how much they were. That's why Allah opens for us the door of repentance 24-7. Allah will accept the repentance of the sinners no matter how severe was the sin or how big or how much the person has sinned until one of two things happen. Until one is about to die and he sees the angel of death, he cannot say, I repent, I repent, I will never do it, Allah forgive me, it's too late. And until the sun rises from the west, which is the major sign of the day of judgment. It is too late. So every day we have chances to repent to Allah and be born again. Allah is the most merciful. He does not intend to give us hardship, rather He would like to give us an ease. We live in this life facing challenges after challenges so that Allah can raise us in ranks. فبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور 
He is Allah, the one who created death and life and brought us to this life in order to test us which one of us is best indeed. So we have to live in this life according to that. Once the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companions and he noticed that one of them was wearing a gold ring. You guys know that it is not lawful for men in Islam to wear gold? And what is gold and what? Huh? Gold and silk. It is not permissible for men to wear gold and silk, even if it is a wedding ring. It's haram. This man did not know. So the Prophet saw him wearing a gold ring and he said, Don't you know that this is like a fire, a burning coal around your finger? Take it off. So he took it off and he threw it away immediately. After the Prophet left, people told him, Pick it up. He said, No way. Not after the Prophet وسلم, threw it away. Immediate compliance. In America, between the 1920s and the 1930s, they passed a new law. It is called the Nobel Law. It was pertaining alcohol. They tried to ban alcohol, wine, liquor, and beer, and alcoholic products in America. They tried their best by enforcing the law. Hundreds of thousands of people were thrown in prison. Millions of penalties and ransom were paid <coughs> and bails for people to get out of prison. But still people drank and still people manufactured alcohol at home. It was only a matter of one single verse that Allah revealed in the Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah saying, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu innama al-khawru wal-maysiru wal-amsaru rijisun min amal al-shaytani fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflikum Al-Hubuni Alkhul and gambling is of is an evil work of Satan so you must avoid it People at that time since it was permissible to drink and they were big time alcoholic they had barrels of alcohol aged for perfection. Once this verse was revealed, they pulled down the alcohol in the streets. There were rivers of wine running in the streets. They could have sold it to non Muslims, but no. Sacrifice. Allah says, So, this is it. Immediate compliance. I have beautiful girls, young and old in America, in Europe, one of them, after wearing the tight clothes and going to the beach, dressed up in the bikini and showing 99% of her flesh to people, now she accepts Islam. And she chose to wear the scarf and the full hijab. And by Allah, she looks like a full moon on a full moon night. The beauty has emerged after she wore the hijab. Why she's doing that? Out of belief. Because she believes this is a command from Allah, so I have to comply. Challenges. Do you think that heaven is for free? And everyone who wants to enter heaven can just enter it? You have to pay the price. You have to meet the requirements and fulfill them. Once I went this young man was an engineer, local American, in one of the Islamic centers in Houston, Texas. They used to think I'm a referred to. I'm born Muslim. I studied in Al Azhar since I was six years old. And this is a blessing from Allah that not a single day I worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. And I belong to a religious family. So I was chatting with this person because he used to think I'm going to revert to and everybody was talking about his story and how he came to Islam. This young man said, Oh Shaykh, you can never imagine. A few years ago, before I accepted Islam, I used to live in New York. Every single night, I would go to the nightclub 
I will drink until I get drunk. I will dance and I 